Thank you again for joining. I am Antor, your host for the day. We will be starting the webinar now. For today's webinar, Fahim and Kamal are here as the speaker. Both of them have been involved with the Kubernetes projects in 2018. Uh, now, without further ado, let's jump into the webinar. If you have any question during the webinar, feel free to ask in the Zoom chat. We will be answering them in the QA part of the webinar. Fahim, please take the limelight. Hello, everyone. I'm Fahim, Senior Software Engineer at Epscot. Today with me have Komal. Komal. Hi everyone, I'm Komal with you. I'm working as Senior Software Engineer at Epscot. I'm also one of the lead engineer on KubeDB and KubeBall project. So as Fahim said, today we'll talk about the challenges of auto-scaling database in Kubernetes. And more specifically, we'll talk about how we solve the problem of auto-scaling in KubeDB. So let's jump into the slide. So what, what is a stateful application? As the name suggests, an stateful, set, stateful application holds its state, sorry, stores its state in a persistent volume. So when a user or client connect to the application, it will react based on its current state. So, how can you implement a stateful application in Kubernetes? So Kubernetes comes with an object, a stateful set, which allow user to run their stateful application in Kubernetes. So a stateful set provide various features to run the stateful application, so, such as a stable and unique network identifier. That means the pod in Kubernetes will have unique pod name and unique pod DNS and it comes with stable and persistent storage, such as each pod will be assigned with a persistent volume. It provides order and graceful deployment and scaling. Mm -hmm. That means you can deploy the stateful application and scale it. You can scale it up and scale it down. It also supports order and automated rolling update. That means when you apply any changes to the stateful state, it will propagate the changes to port one at a time and so on. So now we can run the stateful application in Kubernetes via the stateful set. So why do we need the auto scaling? So meet the demand to meet the demand to a variable cluster when load can change, we need scaling. The scaling can be horizontal or vertical. In horizontal scaling, we can scale up the replicas of stateful application. We can also scale it down. In vertical scaling, we can change the resources such as CPU, memory, and storage. So if you do it manually, it takes lots of continuous monitoring and time. But if you automate the process of scaling, it provides us the following feature. It, it benefits us with the faster response with variable loads. That means when the variable, when the load on the cluster changes, it fast responses, it provides us better fault tolerances, high availability cost reduction. So when we apply auto scaling to our stateful workload, it will only consume the resources that it need. That means it will save our cost. And since we don't need continuous monitoring, it perform automatically, it saves lots of time. So how can you implement auto-scaling on a stateful workload? When it comes to auto-scaling, the first thing came in our mind is the HPA, the horizontal for auto-scaler. But there are a few issues with horizontal scaling on a stateful workloads. So for this demo, we'll talk about more specifically about the databases, since KubeDB is a database product, and, it, and databases are good example of stateful workloads on Kubernetes. So for example, we'll see what is the problem with horizontal scaling. So say we have three pods of uh, databases, we want to scale it, scale it up to four pods. So that way we can scale it up in the kubectl command, we can perform the kubectl scale, the stateful state name and the desired replicas. We want to scale it up. So when you perform a scale up, there are a few problems. Say we are increasing the pod number, 
there is no way we can ensure that the newly pod, newly joined pod, joins the other pod in terms of collaboration, load sharing, and integration sharing. So there is no way to make sure that. And once the pod joins the cluster, there's also no way to make sure that the whole cluster is healthy. So how do you solve it in KubeDB? So in KubeDB, to perform the day two operation, we introduced a new CRD called the ops request, KubeDB ops request. And for Elasticsearch, the CRD name kind is Elasticsearch ops request. And we are performing horizontal scale up by CRD. You can take a look at the CRD sample here. And here we assign the in spec, we assign the type is horizontal scaling. We also mentioned the database reference. ES cluster is the our Elasticsearch cluster name. And in the horizontal spec, horizontal scaling spec, we provided our design mode. So when we apply the ops request on the cluster, the KubeDB operator will perform the horizontal scaling in the following manner. It will perform one pod at a time. It will scale up one pod at a time. Once the pod is up, it will wait for this pod to join the existing cluster. It will make sure that this newly joined pod is connected to the rest of the pod. When the pod is connected, it will also verify that the whole cluster is healthy and functioning properly. Once everything is taken care of, then it will move to the next pod. So this is the way the KubeDB solved the horizontal scale up problem in the managed way. Then in, in, in scale up, scaling down, when you scale down the stateful application, there are similar problems with the KubeCTO command. With the KubeCTO command, we scale down similarly like we scale up earlier. We provide desired replicas. The stateful op controller will shut down the pod one at a time accordingly. But there is no way to make sure that when a pod is gone, that no data is lost. And if the pods are in primary standby mode, we need to scale down the standby pods first so that there is less failover and if, if we scale down the pod, if there is any chance of losing data, we need to make sure that those data are moved to different pod and no data is lost. If there is any ongoing process in the pod, we need to make sure this ongoing task or process is moved to different pod or terminated. And once the pod is ready to be cleaned up, we delete the pod from the KubeDB operator. And once the pod is gone, we make sure that the underlying PVC or PV is also gone so that when you scale up in future, that no corrupted data is found. So this is the managed way we perform the horizontal scale down. You can see we use the same CRD where we specify the time horizontal scaling. We referencing our the database ES cluster. We are also mentioning our design node number. And these are the ideal ways the KubeDB operator perform scale down. So when it comes to automating the scaling process, we have another option. We have the VPA, the vertical pod order scaler. So Fayum will discuss how can we achieve and how we already achieved the OP scaling in KubeDB project. So Fayum, um, yeah. Thanks, Kamal. Yeah. Let me share my screen first. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see. Okay, now let's uh, jump into the challenges of auto scaling. <clears throat> so the first challenge is to determine the resources to scale. <clears throat> if the database is consistently using a lower resources than the requested amount, we should scale down the resource. On the other hand, if the database is using uh, consistently a higher amount of resources, then we should uh, scale, down, uh, scale up the resources. So for example, if our database ports have one core of CPU request, 
uh, but it is continuously using 500 millicore of uh, CPU. We should uh, scale down the request to 500 millicore. So based on uses and the current request, we need a resource recommendation that we can act on to vertically scale our database. So to solve this, we can actually use the Kubernetes vertical portals autoscaler, the VPA, to generate only the recommendations. So VPA has two main components, the recommender and the updater. So here the recommender generates uh, resources recommendation and the updater acts on the resources recommendation. <clears throat> and the updater acts on the resource recommendation and scales the workloads. We can't uh, directly use the updater to update our database. We can turn off the updater using the VPA spec. So the VPA doesn't update the workloads. We'll explain later why we cannot use VPA to update the workloads. So we only need to rec uh, need the recommendation generated by the VPA. When the recommender generates the new recommendations, we can use that to vertically scale our database. So the next challenge is to trigger, when to trigger the auto scaling. So uh, the resource recommendations may change frequently, but uh, the, we shouldn't scale every time a new resource recommendation is generated. For example, if the current recommendation is 500 millicore, but a few minutes later, it may, the recommender may recommend a little bit higher CPU like a 530 millicore, but for these small changes we, of 30 millicore, we should not scale the resources. To solve this, uh, the autoscaler should have some threshold, like the percentage of uh, resource difference uh, between the uh, percentage of resource difference uh, between the current recommendation and the resource recommendation. So when the auto, uh, generated reco resource recommendation exceeds or crosses the threshold, then we'll uh, re re auto scale the database. If it uh, doesn't exceed the recommendation, then we won't auto scale our database. So the next uh, challenge is to manage restart. Databases need managed restart while vertical scaling. For example, in databases with the primary standby architecture, it generally requires restarting all the standby nodes first. Uh, it requires all the standby nodes first, and when all the standby nodes are restarted, the primary scales down, and one of the standby nodes uh, become the new primary. Finally, the previous primary node is restarted, so the order needs to be maintained when we restart the database as a part of the auto scaling process. Also, we may need to check whether all the ports join the cluster or not. This is where we cannot use BPA directly to uh, scale our resources because uh, the BPA won't be able to do the managed restart. So to achieve this, we can use a CRT. The responsibility of the CRT will be to do the necessary tasks like uh, managed restart and the necessary checking after the completed. When we have recommendations to scale, the auto scaler can create an object of the CRD to scale the workloads. The, the, uh, that, uh, that CRD object will perform the whole vertical scaling process. The next challenge is to auto scale a group of workloads together. Generally in sharded databases, each shard is represented by one status set, but all the shards are treated similarly by the database operator. So each shard stateful set actually has the same resource, uh, resource request, but from the VPA rec recommender perspective, each shard stateful set is different and uh, they may have recommendations. So we need a way to scale them all with the same recommendations. To solve this, we can merge all the recommendations and uh, use the merge recommendations to scale the workloads. For example, if there are two shards set, uh, in, the, in a database and uh, each shard has its own recommendations, 
we can actually take the maximum recommendation and uh, trigger the vertical scaling with, uh, with that. So all the stateful set will scale similarly. The next challenge is to handle the failed scaling. An auto scaling operation might fail for several reasons. For example, while restarting the database nodes, uh, they might not join back in the cluster due to some failure. Or for some other database failures, uh, scaling operation may fail. So when an auto scaling operation fails, the database may not be in a user. The auto scaler should know this and uh, shouldn't perform any subsequent operations until the failure is resolved manually or automatically. So if we use uh, CRDs like we have explained earlier for the particle scaling, we can actually solve this problem easily. So we can mark the operations, uh, the particle scaling operation has failed. When the autoscaling, autoscaler tries to trigger an autoscaling operation, it will first check if the last operation was successful or not. If the last operation was successful, the autoscaler won't trigger the autoscaling operation. The next challenge is to handle handling the database maintenance. When the database is going through maintenance, such as horizontal scaling, vertical scaling, reconfiguration, restart, etc., the autoscaler shouldn't trigger any autoscaling operation. If an autoscaling operation runs during maintenance, the database might break. We have an uh, or so, uh, we can have an automated way to pause the auto scaling to solve this problem. Having a CRD for the maintenance operation will help us solve this problem too. If we have a CRD for each maintenance operations, uh, such as horizontal scaling, reconfiguration, restart, etc., we can easily check if there's any ongoing maintenance operation using the objects. Uh, the auto scaler will check the status of the objects and won't trigger any auto scaling operation if there is a currently one of them is uh, ongoing. So now we'll see how Kubedu Autoscaler solves these problems. So this is the architecture of the Kubedu Autoscaler. So here the uh, we have three operators. The one is the Autoscaler operator and the other one is the ops manager operator and finally the provisioner operator. So the provisioner operator is uh, for the managing the MongoDB database. So it creates the stateful set service uh, secrets, etc., for uh, to provisioning the database. On the other hand, the ops manager operator manages the uh, ma maintenance operations such as particle scaling, horizontal scaling, etc. And the auto scaler operation manages the auto scaling operations. So when a user want to auto scale a database, first he creates a MongoDB, then uh, uh, the provisioner operator watches for this MongoDB. Then uh, when when it finds this uh, uh, CRO, then it creates the related stateful sets, ports, uh, secrets, services, etc. When the database is ready, user creates the MongoDB auto scaler uh, CRO, then the auto scaler operator actually watches this CRO. So, according to the number of uh, stateful set in the auto scaler, the auto scaler operator creates uh, a number of BPA depending on the state number of stateful sets. So, when the BPA is created, BPA checks the uh, stateful set and ports, and it generates recommendation. So when the recommendation is generated, uh, the auto scalar operator watches for this the recommendation, and uh, according to the recommendation, it uh, if uh, it uh, triggers the auto scaling, then it uh, creates a MongoDB ops request. So the a MongoDB ops request is a uh, way of uh, doing the ops manager, I mean, the maintenance things. So it will create a vertical scaling ops request. So when the vertical scaling ops request is created, ops manager watches this MongoDB ops request and uh, it uh, scales the, our database. So it will do the all the things like the primary, secondary, uh, 
restarts uh, in an ordered way. So now let's jump into a demo to see how this everything was solved in KubeDB. So I'm using a kind cluster of version 0 0.10. And uh, I have uh, Kubernetes version 1.20 running. I have this uh, KubeDB hand charge installed. So uh, this charts actually installs all the operators needed uh, for the KubeDB. Let's check the por operator ports. So these are the KubeDB operator ports. The, as we have seen in the architecture, the autoscaler ports, ops manager ports, uh, provisional operator ports. And there is also a webhook server which maintains the webhook uh, uh, operations. So now we also have the VPA ports running. Let's check them. So these are the VPA ports. Uh, this is the recommender that we actually need. So now let's uh, uh, check the MongoDB that we, uh, we have already deployed. So this is the YML of the MongoDB that uh, I have deployed. So as you can see here, uh, the version is 4.4.6. Here I'm showing the MongoDB. So the status is perfectly. So here we are providing a sharded cluster configuration. So we have a sharded cluster. So the config server has three replicas. As you can see here, there are three replicas. Uh, of config server. Also, it has one GB of uh, storage for each of them. And uh, we are also giving uh, more two Mongoose replicas. As you can see, there are two parts of Mongoose. Also, we are providing three replicas for each shard. Now there are two shards, so total of six ports are for shard. The first three ports are for shard one and the other three ports are for shard two. So now let's see the uh, MongoDB auto scalar that we are going to deploy. So this is the MongoDB autoscaler uh, YML that we are going to deploy. So here we are providing the database reference. So the database reference is the name of the database that we are going to deploy, which is the name of the name of our database. And here we are only providing the shard uh, as in this demo, I'm going to show uh, shard autoscaling. You can also provide the config server and mongoose to auto scale. So here you can see we are providing the trigger as on. So this means that the, this will auto scale the database. You can turn it off if you need uh, to turn it off for some times. Also, we are providing a resource per this percentage as ten percent. So if the generator recommendation and the current uh, request amount does not exceed ten percent, uh, then it will not auto scale. We are also providing minimum allowed and maximum allowed uh, CPU memory. So uh, the autoscaler will uh, recommend in this range. Also, we, are, we want to control both CPU and memory and we want to control the request and limits. So let's apply this. So as you can see here, it will, it's showing the MongoDB autoscaler, it's applied. So it's uh, immediately created to BPA for our two of the shards of the uh, shard stateful set. Let's check the BPA YML. Sorry. So this is the BPA YML that uh, our autoscaler operator created. As you can see, it passed all the values from here to the BPA, like uh, the control resources as CPU memory, request and limits as control values. Also the max allowed and main allowed CPU from the uh, autoscaler or the MongoDB autoscaler. 
also uh, as you can see we don't want the vertical port auto scaler to auto scale our database we have provided the update policy as update mode off so when the uh, auto scaler generates recommendation it will check this and won't update our database port as you can see it already provided some recommendation for cpu memory so our auto scaler operator will see this and uh, create a mongodb ops request as you can see, it is already created a MongoDB of stickers of type, type particle scaling. It's now in progressing state. The, it will now uh, uh, restart all the ports with the in an ordered way, like the first day standby port, then finally the primary port. As you can see, it's now restarting the secondary ports. It's these two are the secondary ports. And finally, when these are all really restarted, it will restart the primary port. So it's now restarting the second the secondary ports. As you can see, our database is turning into critical state. So critical means that uh, at least one of the port is not running. So in critical state, you can still connect to the database and perform operations. But uh, it shows that uh, one of the at least one of the pod is not in ready state so you can actually real time check that uh, your database is ready critical or not if it shows not ready that means uh, you cannot connect to the database and perform operations for some database failures so as you can see it already restarted the secondary part of the uh, first chart and now it's restarting the primary previous primary port already one of the these two has become new primary so we can check that uh, the current uh, request of the mongodb so as you can see it's only 10 m and uh, 10 millicore and 10 megabyte for memory so when our auto scaling operation completes you will see this uh, cpu and memory values reflected in our mongodb so as you can see already the these database ports uh, have restarted we can actually get uh, check their values if they are restarted with new values or not as you can see it's already restarted with the new values the first chart uh, primary which is 100 millicore and uh, uh, this uh, memory for the memory and uh, here you can see that uh, it matches the CPU and memory of our recommendations. So currently our uh, op manager is restarting the second chart of the second, second uh, secondary part of the second chart. So it's uh, now restarted successfully. Now it will restart the primary part of the second uh, chart. Let's wait for a bit to complete. We can actually check uh, this port if they are currently showing the new value or not. As you can see, the restarted port is already showing the new values. So it already restarted the new, it already scaled. So now database is restarting the primary port when it's all complete successfully, it will show successful. As you can see, it's showing successful. So we have successfully auto scaled our databases. It automatically really triggered this and uh, scaled our databases with the recommendations. So now let's see how KubeDB solved all the challenges. So the first challenge was to generate the recommendation. So we actually used BPA to generate the recommendation. We have taken the BPA generated recommendation and uh, created the MongoDB obstacles to vertically scale our database. Uh, we have used this recommended value of CPU and memory, which is reflected on our ops request. We can actually check the ops request uh, YML.
as you can see it provided this value to scale the chart so the next challenge was to trigger the when to trigger the auto scaling so we have uh, talked about the solution of threshold so if we check our auto scalar yml you will see that we had a resource difference percentage threshold so we have used uh, this value to trigger the auto scaling so the next challenge was to do the manage to restart so we have used this uh, vertical scaling option request uh, to scale our database as you have seen it have uh, restarted all the ports in an ordered way the next challenge was to auto scale a group of workloads together like shard so here there was two shard uh, recommendations as there is two st stateful set we have actually combined them and uh, used that value to scale our database Though currently they are all showing same, but uh, due to load on one chart uh, higher than the other one, it will show different CPU and memory recommendation. So our auto scale operator will actually mask the recommendation and it will scale them similarly. The next was the handling failed scaling. So to uh, we as we have used this MongoDB obsequious CRD, if the status was failed, then uh, autoscaler will, will know this, that uh, this autoscaling operation has failed. And uh, using this value, it won't trigger any subsequent operations. And uh, finally, there was the handling the database maintenance. So when the, uh, as we are using uh, this uh, MongoDB obsequious to do the maintenance operation, so there are other, Obsequious types like vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, restart, reconfiguration, etc. <clears throat> so we can do the vertical uh, uh, maintenance operation using this MongoDB obsequious. So when we do the or, or the scaling operation uh, uh, maintenance operation using the MongoDB obsequious, we can actually check the status. If the any of them is in progressing state, the Auto scaler will, uh, will automatically pause itself and won't trigger any auto scaling operations. So we have solved all the uh, challenges of auto scaling in the database and we implemented the new kubedb to uh, auto scale our databases. So now, if you have any questions, please you can ask. So we have few questions in the chat. The first question is from Lian. Did we consider custom metrics to trigger the scale? I am. We actually use the VPA. So VPA actually use the metric server, as you can see. Uh, we can show the top value of the ports. So it uses this uh, metric server to generate, use this matrix to collect the value and uh, it uh, generates the recommendation based on these values. So it actually maintains a checkpoint of these values and uh, using these checkpoints, it, uh, it uh, generates the recommendation. So we actually use the BPA generated recommendations and uh, use that to scale our resources. And we, we have another question. Could we set up a road time to scale up or down a specific time? E yes, we have planned to support the time window feature. That means we are currently working on it and we have the working POC that we can set a specific time window where we want to perform the ops request such as the scale up, scale down, or it could be something like smart restart, or you want to upgrade your database to a specific time. So we already have the POC. I, I hope we will announce it soon when we can release the final version. Yeah. 
Uh, hey, uh, uh, this is Tomal here. Uh, so I, I just wanted to add a few things to the earlier question regarding custom metrics. So today uh, for uh, vertical scaling, uh, we are using uh, BPA and uh, for vertical scaling, BPA only considers uh, CPU and memory. Uh, it doesn't really look at any custom metrics for triggering those. Uh, so, so answer to that is no. But uh, for horizontal scaling, uh, currently uh, we only support manually triggered, meaning like as a user, you have to tell us like, okay, I want to go from three to five replicas or seven replicas or something like that. There, you, uh, you know, as it is manually triggered, you know, uh, you can consider any metrics in a way, I guess. Uh, but uh, currently we are in the also, uh, something we haven't really kind of talked about in this talk too much is that we are also looking at, uh, you know, uh, effectively building our own sort of recommendation engine kind of on top of uh, VPA, uh, uh, kind of more, uh, uh, you know, tightly integrated into uh, KubeDB for the database use cases and which will uh, give us room to essentially consider other custom metrics down the road. Uh, so, so yes, I mean, in a way, uh, especially for some of the, uh, in memory database use cases, we do have uh, uh, like a specific uh, scenarios where VPA isn't enough today. So we are working on those, uh, yeah. So that's kind of the short answer. No, not today. We don't consider custom metrics, but uh, we look to do those uh, down the road, yes. Um, uh, so I see another question regarding, um, I think uh, welcome, welcome. I think uh, you had having trouble seeing the screen, but I, I guess we are recording all the call, uh, the uh, this uh, the, you know webinar today, so it will be uploaded on YouTube soon. We'll uh, we'll follow up an email uh, with everybody who signed up, so you should be able to um, see it. I guess uh, in recording. Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah. So any anybody if anybody else have any other question, feel free to ask us. Uh, um, so it looks like uh, there is not much question. I guess, uh, uh, you know, I'll go, go, go back to uh, Nazmul to kind of close the session today. So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation today. We hope to see you again. Have a nice day. Thanks, bye.